Hello there, good day. Welcome to the video on Google Mock, the mocking framework for C++ programming language. So before doing a deep dive into the code, let's understand what is mock and why we should use it. So let's start with the definition of a mock. So mocks are used for testing the behavior of APIs or interfaces which will be used in component under test. Something to understand that mocks are not used for testing the API but for testing the component under test. So let's for example consider I have an interface which provides me two functionality called func1 and func2 and I am writing my component which is having two function and I am planning to use this particular interface in my component. So I have to write test for my component not for interface but since the functionality implemented by interface may require external dependencies network connection which is not suitable for unit testing i write a mock for my interface but this mock is not testing the functionality of interface it is being used for testing the functionality of my component that how it will interact when it uses the particular interface mocks are neither stubs nor fakes so mocks are something used for testing the behavior of APIs or interfaces which will be used in component under test. So here API or interface is the interface on the left side and my component is the component under test and mocks are used for testing my component not the interface. As far as fakes are concerned, fakes from a distance it look, looks like a real implementation but it is it isn't a real implementation while stubs are something which is also used alongside mock which can provide a pre canned output to a function call. So that's all about mocks guys. Let's let's go into the code. To use the Google mock we'll have to include this gmock.h file and as well as write some using statement. We'll come to know in due course what is the purpose of this but maybe just for a time being you can just write it if you are writing along with me. Let me just uh, uh, go ahead and write an interface. So I'm having a database connect interface which is having a login, logout and fetch record. For simplicity purpose, I have given some implementation which is anyway not going to be used. And in our real case, it may not even be there. So let me go ahead and write my component which is going to use this database connect. So I'll write my database. Let me use database connect as dbc and since it's a reference I'll have to take it inside the constructor initializer list. I say my database and say database connect reference and assign it to dbc. So that's my constructor. Now I am having an init function in this database uh, which takes two variables username and password. So here it goes. So what I am going to do is that if I am calling, going to call the login function with this username and password. So I will see if dbc dot login username password. So ideally it should be true if it is successful. So I write a condition if not equal to true. Let me just write db failure. And I'll just return minus one over here. Else I'll write db success. And I'll return a positive integer over here. So now the need for mock. So my database uses this database connect, but in the real life, this database connect may be using some database which is at some remote location. And for unit test purpose, we cannot have much dependency. That's why we write mock mock for this class. So and to write the mock for database connect class in using Google mock. It's relatively very easy. We, what we have to do, we have to derive from this class. So let's say I'm having a mock DB class. I'm publicly deriving from database connect class. So inside this, 
So I'll have to write all the mock methods inside the public section. So we can use mock macros. So the macros are like this, depending upon the number of parameters that are there in the function of the method we are trying to mock, we will use that number. So for example, let's start with fetch record. So I'll say mock underscore method zero. Zero means this function doesn't takes any argument. Similarly, mock method one for logout, which returns pool and takes a string username. And similarly, a mock method two, which is login, which also returns pool but takes a string username and a string password as argument. Uh, just to note that there is no need to keep the sequence of the function. You can decide on your own. So this is what our mock class would look like. We don't need to write any implementation. The C Google mock framework will generate it automatically. Okay, now let us go ahead and write the test. So we will write the test as, call it my DB test. And first test will be login test. Okay, so we know from the previous video that we need to do three things in the unit test. Arrange, act and assert. So let me arrange first. Create an instance of my mock DB, call it MDB. Create the instance of my database, call DB. And pass the mock DB inside this. So in the real case, original DB will be passed. In my case, I am using the mock DB. Now, what mock is? Mock will tell that what is the behavior of the class. But we'll come to that later. Let me uh, do the act. So in the act, I'll see if the return value. I'm calling DB dot in it with username. Let's say I'm calling Terminator and password is I am back okay and assert is that expect equal red value if it is successful it will return one okay so that's my test but how does mock come into picture we'll have to use the mock using two macros called expect call and on call let's see about expect call so expect calls is a macro which sets the behavior of the particular interface function which we are going to call as part of this test. So what is our mock object MDB? What is the function? It's login with these two parameters. Okay. So this is the function of this mock object that should be called and I can tell the behavior that it should be called one times and I will have to use dot and will once it will return true. So that's the way I set up my mock behavior. So what I did, this is my mock object. This is the function which should be called and it should be called one time and it will once return true. So when the db dot init calls the login function, it calls the login function of my mock method, not the original method. And my mock uh, implementation is decided by this. So I say that whenever my login function should get called, it should get called at least one time and it will return true at least once. So let me go ahead and compile this code. Okay, there's some missing semicolon and this colon. Okay, two times no. Okay, now it's compiled. Now let me go ahead and run the code. You can see that DB success get called. Okay, which means this part got executed because login returns true. And this is what we set in our code. If we set the return at least once to false, let's see what happened. Compile, clear, run. Our test fails because return value is minus one, which is the failure. 
you can say db failure over here and that's the way it gets called so that's the way we set the behavior and if we set it back to true it will get uh, correct again and times is the cardinality so we can say at least also one it should get called at least one time so let me go ahead and run it's successful if i change it to two you'll see again there is a problem because it's expecting the uh, login to be called twice it's say expected to be called twice but it called only once now the thing is that i am giving this parameter over here terminator i am back let's say i change it to i'll be back okay and see what happens then okay this again fails because i am expecting i am back but i am getting i'll be back so to get rid of this kind of situation we can use something called underscore underscore means we don't bother what is the parameter so if you put any kind of parameter it will be successful so let me go ahead and compile and run again and it succeeds and even if i give something different and it will still be successful Okay, so let me go ahead and write one more test case for login failure. Okay, so I am saying change the test name as login failure. And if I make it uh, as false, the login should fail in this case and this test should pass. Okay, it's uh, there because I have to equate it to minus one. And it's passed. Okay, so I have written a login test as well as login failure test. Uh, but what will happen if uh, in case of login failure in my init, in this particular case, I try it once more. So what I do, I try this dbc.login with the username, password again. And again, check if it is not equal to true. And in this case, if it is not equal to true, then I'll return db failure second time okay so my logic turns into that if first time my login is failed i might be doing something or maybe waiting for some time and then try to login again so once i change the behavior of the function i have to change my test so here i can say instead of calling once you can be called twice so that i can test it let me go ahead and compile and run you say my tests are passing it's actually failing twice but it says that we are calling this will once will once uh, it's giving you the default value but the better thing to do here is to call will repeatedly so no matter how many numbers of time it gets called it will always call false and it my tests are passing okay now this is the way expect call is being used now let's understand there is another thing called on call for that let me just go ahead and change this okay so there is a difference between expect call and on call and let's see what are the difference between these two and i can say on call the syntax is similar mdb okay with the for the login function any type of any parameters it doesn't have times or uh, something like that because uh, because it doesn't talks about cardinality uh, it has some function called will by default 
let's say return true now the difference between all call and expect call is that expect call expect this call to be executed while on call says that this call need not to be executed but if it execute it will return true if you didn't understand it let's say let me say i am not calling in it i am setting rate value to true let me go ahead and compile rate value as one and you say the test is passed even though the login function is not get not got called so that's the difference between on call and expect call and if i am going to call the login function it will return true and the test will pass okay and if i return false the test should fail okay now it failed now you will ask where this kind of thing can be used so this can be used to set up the um, sequence when you don't know which function is gonna get called so for example let me add a function called login to over here so and let me mock the login to also so i now we have two functions login and login to and in the init one init function i'll i'll generate a random number so r value equal to random number mod 2 okay so i'm saying that if r value is equal to 0 if the generated number is an even number then you go ahead and call the login function else call the login to function or uh, maybe i'll just return dbc dot login to so here when we when i'm calling init function we don't know whether login function will get called or login to function will get called in these kind of cases we can use on call where we set the we set the expectation from both and while calling whichever function gets called it will return true let me go ahead and compile this code it runs it will run so it it passed but if you run it if, uh, if you have multiple tests if you generate random number sometimes this gets called or sometimes this gets called okay so in this kind of situation on call is being used because if you say expect call it will expect both login and login to gets called which is not possible as per our, our code so that's all about uh, google mock guys at the beginning of google mock i'll create one more video pay, uh, which will talk about some more detailed aspect of using functions and other things with expect call and on call but that's all for this particular video thanks a lot guys thanks for watching please do not forget to subscribe thank you